Hello everyone. Hello sir. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present through a video. I hope Daniel has already introduced you to the concepts of focused factory. So I will take up the presentation from the framing of the strategy. So as you can see in the slide, uh, we have divided the framing process into five steps. Uh, so the first is defining the objective. The second is evaluating the decision criteria and plant abilities, which we have already discussed in the last chapter. Then involvement of the employees and communication among functional areas. And last but not the least is to maintain the focus. So now we uh, discuss in detail for each and every process. So for defining the objective, uh, all the scholars starting from Skinner have uh, repeatedly told that uh, the objective should be formed and defined beforehand. So what are the steps? So the first step is you have to identify your current problems. These current problems can be long lead times, high levels of in inventory and things like that. Then you have to identify what are the market requirements. So if your customer requires uh, the products in a less time, then you can focus on delivery speed and then you have to reduce the longer lead time problem if you have that already. So basically you have to create a mapping of the problems and where you want to focus. So this will help you in identifying the manufacturing task and framing the goal of the organization. So next is the decision criteria and plant abilities which we have already talked about. I just want to do touch upon a few things like flexibility here. So the first thing is uh, there are several internal and external environmental constraints that we uh, cannot neglect. But uh, yeah, all the companies have a thing for flexibility, but it's not easy to achieve. So. Uh, it's and it's not a alternate to factory focus. So it's not like if you are if you are flexible, you cannot be focused. So the thing is, and uh, there is there is another thing like flexible manufacturing tools, uh, like computerized uh, computerized tools. They have limitations and they cannot be considered as an alternative to focus. So the next step is involvement of the employees. So. Workers are the people who are responsible for much of the coordination that occur in the plants. They are the people who work with the machines and that's why they know much about the product flow efficiency and the machine and equipment compatibility. So it's very necessary to facilitate communication among them and to get the ideas from them to decide where you want to focus. There can be training workshops to achieve a focused work workforce. Then uh, communication among functional areas, each factory has several departments like the design department, the manufacturing department, the marketing department and so on. So if these departments do not work with a consistent and congruent strategy, the focused factory will never achieve its goal. So uh, it's very necessary, very important for the management to stay close to the focused factory to monitor the activities so that any requirement change or any change in the market can be reflected within the focused factory and the needs of the market can be assessed on the base of the manufacturing task that we are adhering to. As I mentioned before, the last but not the least is maintaining the focus. So there are many internal and external influences that constantly pressurize the focus. So one of them is you keep on adding products just to improve the productivity and to manage the overhead costs. But this is not a this is not in accordance to the theory of focus factories. So in general, the managers have to take a focus factory as an ongoing challenge to pursue and it's not a one-time job to create a focus factory. So that's pretty much on framing the strategy. It's a vast thing. Uh, it just doesn't limit to these five steps because there are many, many such things that come up when uh, the actual implementation happen on the workplace. A big plant cannot change to a focus factory overnight. It has to go through the process as we have already discussed in the the strategy part, the framing strategy part. So a big factory, if it cannot 
change to a small and simple factory overnight, how it can be achieved? Because there is a myth that is attached to this focus factory theory that the focus factories are basically smaller factories and the simplicity gives them the edge over other competitors. Skinner, when introducing this uh, concept in 1974, he discusses this and he gives the solution as depending on the various manufacturing tasks a plant has to address, there can be an organizational and physical division of the existing facility. So what he basically is saying is create smaller plants within the big plant. So there will be the, the, the resources, the machines, the people, whoever is assigned to do all sorts of tasks now together, they will be divided into smaller groups including the people and resources and PWPs or plant within plants will be created with relevant manufacturing capabilities and this will not disturb the principle of focus as well as there can be a big plant achieving its own objectives. To achieve this we have to go through a re-engineering process that will involve all the employees and it should give proper rewards to each employee in each focused group because otherwise they will not support this initiative. The last but not, not the least important point is uh, it's not only important that we change the structure, the hierarchical structure, the managerial responsibilities, but we have to take care of the infrastructure as well. Because there might be several shared resources and shared resources reduce your ability to stay focused on a particular task. So uh, it's, it's very important for the managers to pay as much attention to the infrastructure thing. So again, we have uh, tried to figure out a simplification process and there are there is six steps that we have identified. So create a smaller factory unit and this factory unit should be organized along the process or product line or component line. So it can be that for a car component supplier, uh, if there are three different components that are manufactured and then assembled to create the actual component, then what we can do is for each of these subcomponents we can create a PWP that will take care of the production facility for that particular component. So to achieve this what we have to do? We have to give a decentralized authority so the managers, the people who take care of this work, who take up, you know, schedule the maintenance and everything, they will be authority for each of this PWP. Then uh, we have to decentralize the support department such as quality control department. The necessary resources su such as uh, the, the machines and uh, the storage areas should be for individual factories. And overall the factory should act as a close-knit organization. The goal is unique. It's not like everyone is trying to achieve their own goal. In that case we will not even figure out what exactly the company is trying to do as a focused factory. Let's move to examples. So because it's a factory we are talking about, uh, we always think that it should be in the manufacturing sector. So in manufacturing sector, we have product based and process based uh, companies. So in product based companies, we have machineries, then equipment manufacturers, automobile OEMs. And in process based, we have oil and gas, food processing industry and chemical industry. So as you can see, the craft food, we have uh, mentioned it, uh, it has uh, focused factories in food processing industry. Then Venmar and Westinghouse had, uh, has uh, implemented the theory in product based uh, manufacturing sector. In recent times, the focused factory approach has been extended to the service sector as well. So we can see examples of focused factories in eye hospitals, especially in cataract operations and then intensive care units. So this is a very new thing that is coming up and there was a study based on the uh, London hospitals on the on the eye hospitals of London and the study was very interesting as to how focused factory approaches can be implemented in a cataract operation process for eye hospitals. In India we uh, we have a, a eye hospital chain called Arvind Eye Care and they have already implemented a focused factory kind of an approach which uh, targets the the cataract operation thing in such a way that the average operations per doctor is has increased threefold over the years for this particular eye hospital. Every theory is not complete 
until there is some critique to it. Because no theory can be perfect. So we try to find out what are the critical evaluation been done over the years for the focused factory theory. So first we should answer why we are critiquing it, what, what gaps we have already seen. So the first gap is it's largely intuitive because there is, uh, there is a gap between industry's understanding and the theory. And there are successful alternative strategies that exist and many plans of all over the world are following those uh, alternative strategies are being and are very successful. So what is the reason? Uh, what is the reason that focus factory is not a complete approach to it? So there are some limitations of the theory. So the theory doesn't answer some questions. So first of all, we don't have any discussion on long term competitiveness. So how the factory should change, a focus factory should change over the time is not discussed in the theory. The second is the classification system. So how the product focus or process focused uh, factories are different from each other. What, what are the necessary steps that are different or the capabilities that are different? These discussions are not happening. And the third thing is capability trade-offs. Though Skinner uh, speaks about it that a plant cannot be good at everything and it should know which all capability it should focus on. But it never discusses why a particular capability should be chosen as the focus capability and other capabilities or one single capability is let go because I am not good at it. Then the third part is risks of focusing. So it's, it's very intuitive because uh, if there is a change in market requirement, such as uh, say there is a change from uh, from being a very limited uh, product to a very broad range of products that is necessary, say for televisions, then you cannot remain focused to a particular thing or you have to change your strategy in such a way that the final products, you have many varieties, but maybe in the component manufacturing, you are focused on the component manufacturing thing. And the Second one is change in product requirement. This is very essential for uh, changing technology and the new things that are coming up every day. So we are not limited to one single type of technology or one single type of product anymore. Every day there is some modification done to the mobiles. The mobile technology is evolving. So for the mobile manufacturers, is it possible to go for a focus factory? It's risky because in the long run, the focus factory might become a irrelevant factory because it cannot address the needs of the customers. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, now it's a question and answer time. I'll say goodbye to all of you and thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye.